So normally I talk about travel because I am a what I would call a frequent traveler. I travel a lot, it's like more and more. And so usually I talk about that. Usually I want to give you product reviews. I want to talk about destinations and I want to talk about tips and tricks on how to travel, how to make that more enjoyable. But as of today, I'm not traveling anymore, which is kind of a drag for me in many ways. But there is some light at the end of the tunnel, I think, as far as I'm going to save up a lot of holiday and then I'm going to go on bigger, longer trips because normally my trips are anywhere from four to seven days, which is not very long for, you know, going halfway around the world. So that could be good. But what I want to do today is talk to you about, since we're not traveling, what I want to talk to you about is what do we need to do today to prepare for what the WHO has said is a pandemic? And 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 I would agree, right? It's uh, I think that they delayed saying that for various reasons, but we've been in a pandemic for some time and, and we definitely are now. <clears throat> and so what, what should we be doing? How should we prepare? And, and so not only am I a frequent traveler, but I, but I also am a first responder. And uh, so I think about these things quite a bit. And so I, I, I think I have some, some good tips for you on, on what to do. So we're in a situation now, uh, we're no longer flying, we're, you know, everywhere is closing down, we're doing quarantine. So A, what I did today, cancel your flights. And when, you, when I say cancel your flights, it, it, you have to take a look at what kind of ticket did you buy? Because you probably wanna get your money back and you may not get your money back very easily. So if you're going to a country that has already closed its borders, then your airline will probably give you the money back, even no matter what kind of ticket you bought, that's likely. But if they don't, give them a call and see if you can get at least credits to fly later because they'd be, they're interested in that, right? <clears throat> so, so ask for that. Um, I fly Air Canada quite a bit and uh, I was able to get credit, even though I bought a ticket that has no refund capabilities, right? So I did not expect any of my money back, but it looks like, and I just processed this today, I haven't seen it completed yet because it's all online, but it looks like I will get get some credits. I tried calling them. I can't get through. They're, you know, they're just overloaded. So so that's what you want to look at for your upcoming trips. You're going to cancel flights. Try to get some money back. Uh, I think that you want to do it. Um, start, start looking at that now because if you leave it too late, that's going to be problematic. It's only going to get worse, right? Cancel your accommodations. So I'll be doing that actually right after this. I make this video is I'll be going in and doing that. And again, uh, in this case, I use my points. So I wanna try to get my points back. And that shouldn't be very difficult as long as you do it uh, so many hours before you're supposed to arrive. And in my case, I believe it's 40, 48 hours. So uh, I wanna get on that and get that done. So that's that's the first thing I would recommend people do <coughs> for, for you travelers, right? Uh, the next thing, and this is very important, and I was gonna put this as first, but I think that the, the flight canceling your trip stuff, that's probably very time sensitive. And so you, you probably want to do that right away. Think about that right away. But the next big thing that's very important is you start, need to start thinking about your family, right? Your dependents, especially. So with this virus, the older you are, the more at risk you are. So grandma, grandpa, we need to start thinking about them, right? Are they in a home? Are they living with you? Do they go out? What's the risk there? So you need to start thinking about that. How are you going to protect them, right? And so uh, develop protocols for that. What's that going to look like? Do they have enough food? Are they going to stay in? Do they have, say, a Netflix subscription so they can not get bored, right? Maybe they can go for a walk in the backyard rather than going to bingo, right? Something like that. You need to start, start making sure they have very limited interactions with other people um, because that is high risk. If they're in a home... You may want to think about bringing them out and having them live with you if you can. I know that's going to be difficult for many of you, but if uh, if my parents were in a home, I'd be pulling them out right now. So if you can't do that, then talk to the facility, find out what they're doing, <coughs> find out what their um, protocols are and what they're doing to protect uh, those people. They should be using an alcohol solution to wipe down all surfaces they should be limiting visitors. They should be uh, quarantining people to their rooms as much as possible. All, all these things. If they're not doing that, that's not good. So 
just get after them, right? Uh, I'm doing the same thing with the schools where my kids go. I'm emailing the principal. Hey, what's your plan? Oh, you don't have one? Well, you got to have one like right now. So, you know, it doesn't hurt. Get on the phone, start asking them questions, be professional, but let them know that you're not going away until you see some sort of plan and that it makes sense. And then also I would validate it, right? So, okay, so that's your plan. You intend to do this. Okay, can I see, right? So as my Russian buddies always say, trust, but verify. And, you know, I, I tend to live my life that way and, and it's it's a good principle. So look out for your dependents. Uh, your kids, if you've got kids, that's something to look out for too, but they seem to be pretty resilient to this virus. And um, so I think that that should be not too bad, but they will be carriers, right? So that's something to look out for. So the next thing now, once you get through those two things, and those are the kind of the time sensitive things that you need to look at. The next thing is kind of getting yourself ready to tuck in, right? So we're looking at months of pain, right? Where we're going through this, we're not traveling, we're trying to stay at home and we're trying to limit exposure. So for me, I either want to get this virus now, which is not going to happen because I, I don't know who's infected so that I can get it out of the way and have access to hospitals before they're overrun or else I want to wait as long as I can. So option B is really going to be what happens because I can't pick option A. So I want to go as long as I can without being infected. How do I do that? Well, I limit exposure, right? It's as simple as that. Limit exposure. So you have to think about, well, what do you, what do you normally do in a three month period? One of the things that I do every quarter or six months is I go to the dentist and I'm a bit of a germaphobe on, on the best day, even without this virus thing going on. So when I go to the dentist, it freaks me out because I have this person, I could never be a dentist. You, you have this person leaning over you and your mouth is wide open and they're looking into it and they're, they're cleaning it out, right? To me, I would rather work in the sewers than clean out your mouth, right? No matter who you are, right? No offense, but I've seen inside my mouth and I don't even like my own mouth, <clears throat> right? So, so there's that. Um, where am I going with that? Yeah, oversharing, I think, right? Sorry. Uh, anyway, so when the virus hits and everybody's getting infected, if you're not infected and you're thinking, well, maybe I'll go to the dentist and I'll open my mouth up and I'll let somebody else kind of like breathe right into it. No, that's probably not good, right? That's, yeah. Plus all the things are sticking into it, right? And that that's, yeah, that's not going to be good. So I went to the dentist yesterday and I sat down. I got my teeth clean, see them nice and clean now. Not as straight as I like them, but they're, they're, they're cleaner than they normally are. I drink a lot of coffee, so they're a little stained. But, um, but they're clean. They feel good. Uh, I feel good because that's done. Now, check, right? I'm not going back for, I don't know, we'll see. Hopefully I can go back in like four to six months and get that done again, get a little tune up. But I'm not going to go back in like a month or two when the, you know, when the big tsunami hits. I'm not doing that. So, so that's something to think about. So if you're going to go to the dentist and you live in North America, you know, it's still like, it's a bit risky this week for sure. So that dentist could have been infected. Now I could be infected. So there's a chance. But I think it's still relatively low. I think if you wait a week or two, then it's going up exponentially, right? I mean, we're seeing exponential growth of the virus, of the spread. So that's what you should be thinking about. Every day you wait is bad, right? So if you want to get your teeth clean in the next six months, go now. Book it now. And if they say, oh, the only spot we have is like 8 a.m., don't care. Just go, right? Because the thing is, a month from now, when you're tucked in, you're watching Netflix all day and you're just, you know, you're, you're quarantined at home. And then all of a sudden you're like, hmm, my teeth feel gross, right? No, you can't, you can't do it then, right? So go do it now. That's the big one. Uh, doctor. So if you go to the doctor on a more frequent basis and you check in with your doctors quite often, go now, right? So go this week, go in, get whatever you do there done and then tell your doctor, hey, can I? do like a video conference or phone you 
or like just not be here because a doctor's office is the worst, right? Everybody who thinks they're sick, some of them are, are going to be in that waiting room and you're walking into this highly infectious virus room. Not good. So you want to avoid that. So go this week while you still have a chance, get it done. Same with the dentist, right? Dentist, I think is even worse in some ways, right? Because your yapper is wide open and all the stuff's going in it. So that freaks me out. <clears throat> so do those things, get it done. Uh, that's what I highly recommend. So you got that stuff done. Now I'm going to move into the next thing. And this is a little bit things, get it done. Uh, that's what I highly recommend. So you got that stuff done. Now I'm going to move into the next thing. And this is a little bit, some supplies. Okay. I'm not a big prepper, uh, but I do like to kind of plan for things going wrong. There's some simple things you can buy, things that you're not going to waste your money on, things you're going to need anyway. So let's just kind of go through the list of things that I think about. And, and these are actually things that you would take when with you when you travel as well. So if you've got a suitcase that you use for travel or if you've got a go bag or whatever, it's probably in there already. Maybe you don't have to buy anything, but you want to check your inventories, right? So first, toothpaste, right? We've gone to the dentist. We've got that done this week. We're all good. You got a cleaning, you got a crown, you got whatever you need to do, maybe a root canal. You got that done. You don't have to go back there and open your mouth for anybody for another while. But let's get some toothpaste, right? A couple, uh, couple things of toothpaste. That's going to last you a while, right? Maybe, you know, if you have a family, you know, maybe get a like a three pack or something. You're probably pretty good. So that's good. Uh, toothpaste and then maybe get a little soap, right? So you're going to be washing your hands a lot from now on, right? So you're going to be burning through the soap. So get some of that liquid soap, get some disinfectant, get some body soap. Those bars last a long time. So I don't know about you, but I think a bar of soap for me lasts like a month or two. Maybe I'm not using it right because it seems to last a long time. But, you know, go buy a bunch of bars of soap. They're cheap, right? It's like a buck each or two bucks each. <clears throat> I don't think you need to get like, you know, fancy soap. You just get whatever, right? And that's going to be cheap. Then, you know, if you've got more hair than me, uh, buy some shampoo. I mean, I do shampoo my hair, believe it or not. I just don't have a lot of it. So I use this a little tiny, tiny, tiny bit. But yeah, get yourself some shampoo. If you buy a little bottle of shampoo, that's going to last you through the season. So when we all come out, you know, in the fall or whenever it's going to be, you know, your hair will be nice and smelling good. So buy some of that. Um, on a more serious note, you may want to get some first aid. And I don't mean go out and buy a oxygen tank with a respirator or, or like any of that stuff. So much, I mean, if you want, sure. But for me, I'm going to go out and buy the typical first aid stuff that I know I'm going to need on a daily basis, not a daily, but a regular basis. So band-aids, right? Maybe some hydrogen peroxide, but really good thing to get, right? Hydrogen peroxide, multi-use band-aids, maybe some, uh, some tape, some gauze, some antibiotic cream, maybe some burn cream, things you're going to need around the house because you're going to have accidents because you're going to be at home more. You're going to cut yourself. You're going to burn yourself. You're going to get stuff in your eyes, some eye drops. Ooh, I didn't have that on my list, but, but definitely get some eye drops, right? Stuff like that, some gauze, some tape, um, some ointment and stuff like that. Uh, so get all that. Don't spend a lot of money, but you know, definitely band-aids. <clears throat> so buy some of that. And then, you know, with the first aid, you probably want to get some medications, right? So if you have prescription medications, go get those, go get extra, right? Because a lot of those are actually being manufactured overseas. We're going to see shortages of those. Everybody's talking about that now. I believe that to be true. So go get some of those. Uh, even if you don't have prescriptions, go get some pain relief, go get some decongestion stuff. Um, go get some, um, if you've got allergies, definitely get some stuff for your allergies. And this includes things like EpiPens, right? So if you have an allergy to bee stings, get an EpiPen, right? I know they're about a hundred bucks or around that. I know they expire. So nobody's in a hurry to buy those. But when we're talking about quarantine time, you want to have those sort of things with you. If you don't have an EpiPen, make sure you got some Benadryl uh, or have both, right? You want to have Benadryl anyway, probably. Be careful how much Benadryl you take. Well, be careful with your EpiPen too, right? Because people forget how kind of potent those things can be. But, you, you know, if you're used to it, I'm sure you're you're fine. Just, you know, know what you're doing there, okay? So we got through that. 
Uh, make sure you're stocked with the Tylenol or the ibuprofen or whatever you whatever you prefer. Because let's assume we got we all get the flu for two or three weeks. What do you normally do when you have the flu? Have some cough candies, have some cough syrup, have some Tylenol or whatever it is. Maybe get some uh, neocitrin. Maybe get some uh, lemon drink, some honey. Maybe get some honey, right? Because we're gonna let's plan for that. Because we're gonna we're gonna get it. I would bet money you're gonna get the flu of some strain, right? In the next six months, or somebody in your family will. So let's just plan for that, right? Because it's gonna be similar, right? So let's let's do that, okay? Uh, okay, I hate to mention it, but toilet paper. So don't go crazy, right? We see a lot of crazy right now with the toilet paper. I don't know what's going on with the toilet paper. I went out and I got a little crazy with the toilet paper too. And I bought a whole bunch, not a whole bunch. I bought like, I don't know, like this much, right? You can't see that in my hands, but they go out all the way. So I don't know how many rolls that was, but I must have like a hundred rolls of toilet paper. And I bought it because you all are buying all the toilet paper. Okay. And I'm worried that I'm going to run out of toilet paper, you know, and I'm going to get up and go, now what do I do? So that's why I bought the toilet paper. Not because I, I need a lot of toilet paper, not because that's the thing that I'm going to really need, but right? that's the last thing I probably really, really need. But I just think it'd be nice to have a little bit because you're all buying it all. So go get a couple rolls, but I wouldn't go crazy. Let, let's say you run out of toilet paper, right? worst case condition, you run out of toilet paper. Oh my God. Okay. There's other things you can do, right? It's not fun, right? But you can do other things there, right? You've got cotton socks. They're washable. Okay. I mean, it's, it sounds gross, but that's doable, right? In a pinch, you could do that, right? Uh, tissue paper, right? We could do that. Paper towels, we could do that. Uh, you could work some sort of Baudet system, right? Where you could get a uh, a uh, soap bottle and you could put a little soap in it, just a little bit, and put some warm water in there. That's, you know, like a makeshift Baudet. Again, I wouldn't find that very much fun, but if you're in a pinch and you're at home and you've got time, that's going to work. So if you run out of toilet paper, it's not the end of the world. There's worse things you could run out of, right? Like first aid equipment, medicine, food. <clears throat> so if you got a ton of toilet paper and you run out of everything else, nobody's going to be in a hurry to trade with you, right? So anyway, sorry, I'll get off the toilet paper. Uh, oh, I got a question here. Hello from Finland. I use face mask, but I would change also air filters to my car and air cleaner in my home, clean water and vitamins. Yeah, great, great recommendation. Uh, I'm going to talk about that actually right next as well. So uh, filters, there's a bunch of different filters that you can get. Okay. So there's the N95 masks you can get. There's the proper respirators. There's the full gas mask you can get as well. And ironically enough, of all of those, the gas masks, I think are still available. Now, if you wear one of those, keep in mind that there's a big shock value there, but also keep in mind that they're the most effective because they're protecting your eyes it makes a perfect seal and the filter that goes on it let's say like uh for mine it's a it's a the army mask so it's got the 40 millimeter nato uh valve where it hooks into the filter uh that's universal so the filter is a p100 or p1000 i forget but it, it's it's all i need it's 20 dollars, and it'll last a while and it's technically sort of reusable now, if you if you have lots of them, you don't want to reuse it. But but if you run out of them, you could potentially uh, leave it out for a week or two, so any viruses that are in it die because it's just a particulate filter. And then you could potentially reuse it. Is there some risk to that? Sure, maybe a little bit. But I, I that's what I plan to do. I have a half a dozen filters, and I think that would last me quite a while. So so there's those filters for your face. But then there's also two other types of filters, three other types of filters. There's your car filter. Now, for your car, I would, you know, if you're worried about that, I would put it on recycle the air so you're not actually having intake from the outside. And that's what I typically do just to protect me from pollution anyway. And so you could do that and you can have your mechanic change that filter. But I would just not even go to the mechanic if you can help it because you want to limit your interaction, right? So um, just put it on recycle air. 
The other filter is your furnace filter. If you live in a house, you have a furnace filter uh, and that you can check to make sure that it's filtering at the right level. Um, I think what you're looking for is like 1500 or 2000 and take a look and it actually will show you uh, on the package what it's filtering. Um, but that's the numbers that I look for. Those filters, you could actually cut those out and make a face mask filter out of those in a pinch. And I've seen some funny jokes about that, you know, with some duct tape and some, you know, that filter is going to look totally, you know, DIY, but, but, and that's what it is, but you could do that because it's similar material. It's not going to be super comfortable necessarily, but you've got an option there. The other filters that you can get, and, and I just, my wife bought some of these and we have them in the house now. We have an air purification filter and it brings in the air. So if there's particles in the air, it brings them in, filters them with a HEPA filter, which is good, but it's also got a UV light in it. So it's, it's continually killing the bacteria as it's filling it through there, right? So uh, we try to, we have three of those. And we put them in the three main rooms to try to kind of prevent that a little bit, right? The idea is if my kids get the virus, they come home and, um, and then that uh, they're breathing out and it's filtering through that, that may reduce the chance of everybody else getting sick. Maybe, right? So there's that. There's also then UV lights. And now UV lights, you have to be careful with, right? Because they will kill bacteria just like natural light will. So in my office, I like to open the window in the daytime to get that natural light in because it will kind of kill bacteria slowly over time. UV lights speed that up a little bit, although they are very dangerous to you. You do not want to be in the room when the UV light is on. So if you have a big UV light and you turn it on, maybe get one with a timer on it so you can have it turn on at night. Don't be sleeping in that room because you will wake up in a lot of pain. <clears throat> the What happens is if you're in a room with the UV light, it will kind of burn your skin. and It's just like a sunburn. And, and no matter, you know, how tanned your skin is or conditioned it is, it will still do that. It will smell. So you'll hear us, you'll, you'll smell it actually as well. And your eyes are probably the worst thing. So it will be like someone dumped sand in your eyes and very difficult to sleep after that. There's nothing you can do about it. Your eyes will heal. Your body will heal over time. But uh, I believe it is carcinogenic. So long-term could have some impacts, but it just, I would not want that at all, right? So stay away from that. If you're going to use a UV light, they have them built into some of the filters where it's not actually exposing you directly, which is good. But then also you could have it say, you know, above your keyboards or your keys and wallet and stuff like that. Or maybe you want to put it above your shoes near the door to kind of zap your shoes, right? Something like that, perhaps. Uh, yeah, so I've ordered one of those as well, just the direct UV light, which I think I will put at the front door for my shoes and jackets and stuff like that. Uh, it does take many hours to fully, you know, work it, do its thing. Uh, so it's not super quick. So there's some out there where you just stick your hand in. It's supposed to like zap your hand and clean your hand. I don't, I don't think those would work very well. So just my my thought there. All right. So those are the supplies that I would look at, okay? Now let's get into food. And food is a tricky one, right? I see all these videos of preppers and they've got like, you know, big gallons of water and they've got bags and bags of rice and dehydrated food and stuff like that. <clears throat> I'm not positive that we're going to be in that sort of situation. There are some discussions that near the end of the year, we may see a shortage on some foods and sure, we may, we may, you may get less variety in the supermarket near the end of the year. You may see a reduction in things like, I don't know, avocados or tomatoes or whatever. I don't know. I'm just guessing at what those things may be. We may start to see that. But right now, I'm not going out to buy and, and going to buy a bunch of dehydrated food. Well, first, I just hate eating dehydrated food because I've already eaten so much of it when I go on my trips and stuff. Uh, well, not not travel so much as camping and stuff like that. But what I am buying is stuff I'm just going to use in the house anyway. And now I'm buying a little bit more of it. So in the kitchen, I have a box full of stuff that's long term stuff that I'm going to cycle through anyway. I make a lot of pasta. I really enjoy eating pasta. So a lot of it is is in that kind of pathway. Excuse me. 
So I have cooking oil. So I have a couple big jars of cooking oil. Uh, I like to buy like really nice cooking oil, cold pressed avocado or, or avocado or olive oil. I like. Um, so I have some of that because I always use it, right? Canned goods. So I have instead of buying frozen vegetables, which you know I would prefer, I've got a lot of meat in the freezer right now, and so that's kind of taking up the room. And I don't want to have canned meat so much. So I'm buying canned goods so much like things like, you know, vegetables and fruits and stuff like that. For me, it's tomato sauces, canned tomatoes. Normally I would make all that from scratch, but it doesn't keep very well. So I'm doing that. I'm thinking about doing some pickling actually, like things like pickled eggs and stuff that I used to eat as a kid. I never eat anymore. Like I would never even think about eating those now, but in a pinch might be nice, right? A little thing, a little treat like that maybe. So something to think about canned goods. Uh, of course, pasta. Uh, I've got so many different types of pasta and that they last a long time, right? And worst case scenario, let's say it's like really bad. I run out of sauces and all my canned goods are done, but I've got lots of pasta left. I just boil some water, throw it in, maybe a little dab of oil and I can eat that, right? It's not going to be exciting, but I'm going to get a bunch of carbs from that. And uh, okay. Uh, rice, of course, I eat a bunch of rice and I would buy a variety of rice. <clears throat> so I would buy some bismati, I would buy some sushi rice, I'd buy some brown rice, I'd buy some quinoa. I really like the quinoa these days. So I buy some of that. Uh, flour, I'd also buy some flour and I'd buy varieties of flour as well, right? Buy some brown flour and buy some white flour. And that way you can make bread. If you're going to be at home for a while, and I've already started thinking about this, is you can make your own bread. Um, which is kind of fun, right? Something to do. Uh, and homemade bread is amazingly tasty. And you can uh, you can have a meal just from, say, bread, a couple slices of cheese, maybe some pickles, maybe get some olive oil or, um, oh, what's the, uh, the dark olive oil? I forget. Oh, darn it. Anyway, you dip it in that. Whew, man, I can just, I'm, I'm hungry just thinking about that. And it's not a fancy meal at all, right? But it's delicious. So, Anyway, there's that. Sauces, of course, right? So get some uh, bottles of tomato sauce. You can get tubes of tomato paste, and that actually goes a long ways as well. So so there's that. So that's food. I'm sure there's lots of other food that you can you can think of, but those are the foods that that I would that I'm getting right now. Oh, power bars and snacks. I bought a bunch of potato chips that I never normally eat, but I'm thinking like if I'm sitting at home all day, every day for a while. Uh, I'm going to start to get a little bored probably. So I want to just mitigate the boredom is what I want to do. So I'm going to be, I'm going to be working out a lot. I'm going to be, you know, studying a lot. I'm going to be working a lot more than I ever do because I'm not traveling. I'm not driving to the office. So I'm getting a lot done. Uh, and I'm going to burn through stuff. So I'm going to, you know, practice some language courses and stuff like that. I signed up with a online language course actually just now. And, uh, so I, I got that going as well. Okay. So there's that. Uh, and that brings me to working from home. So if you can work from home, it's great. If you can't for, because your job is more, maybe more manual, it's outside, maybe your construction, something like that, that's hard to do from home, right? But if you can, <clears throat> and I know some of you may be thinking, well, I don't know. It's, I, I don't know if I can, like I was talking to a sales guy the other day and he said, well, my, uh, my clients don't want me to visit them. And he was very worried about his job. And he was saying, well, I might lose my job, right? Because I, I can't visit my clients. If I can't visit my clients, how am I going to do my job? So my answer to him was, well, get out in front of it, right? Talk to your clients about their concerns and offer them a solution, right? So if you can do that now, then that would be way better. And, and show them how easy that is and get them going on your system so you can video conference with them. Uh, so that's one thing. Get prepared to work from home. And then the next thing is really kind of getting ready to uh, get supplies. So for me, I'm an Amazon Prime member. I enjoy that. And um, and it's delivered right to my door. I have a little protocol. So I'll like try to like spray it down, throw the stuff away before it comes in the house, and then take it out of the package, wipe it down if I need to, and then I'll, I'll store it if I'm going to get stuff. I'm not going to be going to the grocery store if I can help it. So that, that's kind of my, my game plan. And uh, yeah. So I think that's enough for now. Uh, if you have any questions, let me know. Um, other than that, yeah, hopefully that was helpful. All right. Safe travels, everybody. Have a good one.